Hi guys, Pete the Wargamer here, back with another Warcry speed painting tutorial, and in this video I'll be tackling the Untamed Beasts using the Citadel range of paints. Now the intention of this tutorial is to get your miniatures painted up to a respectable gaming standard in as little time as possible, using as few paints as possible, because after all, playing with painted miniatures of any standard is better than boring bare plastic. So some key things to note before we start. Paint all of your miniatures at the same time, applying each colour to each model before moving on to the next paint. And remember to keep the steps quick and not worry too much about little mistakes or getting things perfect. The first step in painting your untamed beasts is to prime so the later layers of paint properly stick to the surface of the models. I've used a black primer for this as this will provide the shading in the deepest recesses, therefore removing the need for heavy washes. You will also notice that I've only partly assembled some of the models. This was to make painting some of the harder to reach areas a lot easier and therefore less time consuming. To hold these components when painting, I used a pin vise to drill a small hole before attaching a length of 1mm wire with a little super glue. The Untamed Beasts feature lots of warm colours like browns and tans, so it makes sense to start off with a brown paint, dried bark in particular. However, we want to preserve that dark black in the recesses, which means that the best way to apply this is via some dry brushing. Dry brushing involves loading up a fairly large brush with some paint and removing some of the excess onto a tissue or piece of paper until only a small amount of paint remains in the bristles. With your dry brush ready to go, drag it across the whole miniature. The paint will start to accumulate onto the raised areas, leaving only the black recesses visible. As you can see, this is a very quick and easy step to perform. One thing I like to do while dry brushing is to keep my brush ever so slightly damp as it helps to avoid that dusty texture that can often form. Even though the technique is called dry brushing, having a small amount of moisture in your bristles will give you better results. Also, be sure to rinse out your brushes after painting four or five of your miniatures in your batch, as this will help to prevent the accumulation of paint in your bristles and keep your brush workable for longer. Using the same dry brushing technique as before, we next want to apply some wraith bone across the model's surface. However, this time we are only looking to pick out the more raised areas and to add some thin lines of lighter paint to the edges. This is easily achieved by simply using less pressure as you drag your brush across the surface. This will cause the paint to accumulate only on those raised edges rather than across the flatter areas. I should note that if you're looking to create darker skin tones on your untamed beast, then all you need to do is reduce the amount of wraith bone that you apply over the flesh areas. The more wraith bone you apply now, the lighter the skin will become in the next step. So keep that in mind as you approach this dry brushing. So at the moment we have a model that is all the shading and the highlights, but is essentially in grayscale. Therefore, over the next few steps, we'll be starting to apply some colour and the best way to do this is by using some contrast paints. The strong pigmentation and translucent nature of contrast means that when it's applied over the areas of pre-shading like what we have here, it will maintain that shading while simply adding colour. This means that applying colour is incredibly quick and easy to do, perfect for speed painting. The first paint I'm using here is Darko Flesh and this is being applied straight from the pot over the exposed skin. As you can see, it pretty much instantly creates a decent skin tone and works just as well over darker tones as it does over the lighter ones. Remember when applying your contrast paints to not let them pull too heavily, try to spread them out evenly across the surfaces. The next contrast paint to use is Agaros Dunes and this will be used to create an appearance of light tan across the areas of cloth and animal skins. I'm personally focusing this paint across only the loincloths, capes and foot wraps across the warband, but feel free to mix and match where you apply the next few colours if you want to create something more unique. I will also be using this particular paint to tackle the fur of the Rock Tusk Prowler. Using the same technique as before, I am next going to be using some snake bite leather for that light reddish brown colour. I'll be applying this particular paint over any wrappings around the arms, legs and weapon handles. Next up, we'll be using the aptly named Skeleton Horde to pick out the numerous areas of bone on the models. Again, if you're looking to create your own scheme, you could also use this paint for some lighter areas of cloth. To create a reddish brown colour over the leather harnesses worn by the Untamed, I will be using some Gore Grunter fur. This paint can also be used over the Rock Tusk Prowler's mane and other areas of longer fur. Make sure that you leave the horns in their greyish brown colour, however. 
The final finishing piece for the models is to very carefully apply a small dry brush of Stormho Silver over the chain mail and small star pendants that are scattered across the warband. And here we have the completed Untamed Beast warband. I finished things off by creating a simple basing scheme using some textured paints, some dry brushing and some grass tufts. This entire warband of 9 miniatures took me around 4-5 to five hours to paint in total, which can easily be spread out across a few evenings or over a weekend. While the paint job certainly won't win any awards, it's a good way of quickly getting your warband painted up. After all, it's much better to play with a fully painted army than a tide of bare grey plastic. So if you enjoyed this speed painting style of video and would like to see me give the same treatment to other miniatures, warbands or other miniatures that found in Warcry, then do let me know in the comments below. If you have any questions or would you like to chat with others who enjoy my channel, I've set up a Discord server which you can find a link to in the description below as well. Now if you want to support me in making these videos, you can do so by checking out my Patreon page, which you can find in the description. And from there you can donate to me from as little as a dollar a month, which just helps me in producing these videos. So the only thing left to say is, thanks for watching and goodbye.